Hi, welcome back. So last video, we talked about the thought distortion of all or nothing thinking. We identified what that was. Basically, it means that either everything goes perfect or everything was a failure. This is a, a mindset we get trapped into that leaves us hung up, unable to progress because perfection is not possible. So since perfection is not possible, we tend to feel like we're a failure all the time, sabotages our momentum. So we covered that in the last video. Now, if we've discovered that we function in all or nothing thinking, or someone we love and care about is killing themselves stuck in this sabotage of all or nothing thinking, what are some things we can do? So that's what we're gonna talk about today. There are things we can do to kind of, uh, it's called cognitive restructuring. Right. This is a cognitive thought distortion. So this is cognitive restructuring that we can restructure our thoughts. We can restructure how we think about things, how we respond to things. And that's the blessing. It's one of the beautiful gifts God has given us is that we have the ability to change. We have the ability to grow. Um, this kind of separates us from the plant kingdom and even the animal kingdom is that we get to have a growth mindset. We are made in the image of God. And therefore, we get to go on this grand journey, this grand adventure of being transformed into his image. So change your thinking, you change your life. If you find that all or nothing thinking is an issue for you, it leaves you in that binge purge cycle or in that um, manic, get everything done until something goes wrong and then poo, I plummet and fall. If you find yourself in that cycle, you can renew your mind. Scripture tells us, right? This is, you need to step into, I know we're talking about sort of psychology and things in the natural realm, but step into the spirit realm with me for a minute and realize that there's a source for some of these situations. And 1 Corinthians 2, 14 tells us the natural person does not accept the things of the spirit because they're folly to him. He's not able to understand them because they're spiritually discerned. The spiritual person judges all things, but is himself to be judged by no one. For who has understood the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Who has understood the mind of the Lord to instruct him? For we have the mind of Christ. You have the amazing access as a believer to step into the mind of Christ. So even when your own mind feels cluttered, or feels like you're failing or falling apart, or confusion, whatever it is that's combating your mind, even when anxiety is coming your way, you have access to step into the spiritual realm and access the mind of Christ. It's a beautiful thing. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. We have the opportunity to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. That's in Romans. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. These are good things. It helps to, to test and discern the will of God for us. And the will of God for us is not that we either get it 100% perfect or we fall apart. That was the law. Jesus came to fulfill the law because there was no way we could be 100% perfect and fulfill the law of God. That was not a possibility. So Jesus stepped in and fulfills it on our behalf. So all or nothing thinking is a sabotage that you just don't want to have as part of what you're going on. So you put on the mind of Christ. You take those thoughts captive. Okay, how can we do that? We start considering alternative options, alternative perspectives. If I've planned an event, a nice dinner party or a nice date, and this one thing didn't go my way, something didn't go my way, instead of fixating on what went wrong, let me think about everything that went right. Let me think about all the good things that happened. Um, consider the outcomes if you're in a job interview or an audition or you took a test. This is a... My, my son has dyslexia, Josh has dyslexia, and schooling has always been a challenge for him. High school was a real challenge for him. He's brilliant, brilliant vocabulary, incredible mind. 
IQ is probably off the charts. He's just a really smart young man. But when it comes to taking tests, particularly standardized tests that are timed, he just freaks out. His test anxiety goes through the roof. He assumes he's going to fail before he ever starts the test. And he has brought that prophecy to fulfillment many a time. So this year in 2021, he was going after fire department. He wanted to join the Fort Worth Fire Department. And you've got to take a general knowledge test that's pretty beefy, pretty beefy. And he studied and studied and studied. He was so proud of him. He worked 10 times harder probably than most of the people that were taking the test. And he went and instead of, you know, shoot for a hundred, son, shoot for the moon and at least you'll hit the stars, all those kind of things. Well, that works for some people that doesn't work for Josh. Josh was shooting for, I want to pass this test on the first try. Lots of standardized tests, he ends up failing by one. It's been kind of his part of his story. All those tax tests and standardized tests, he would take them, fail it by one, end up in summer school, mm, take it, fail it by one. You have to repeat those things a couple of times again, very discouraging. So when he took this Fort Worth Fire Department exam, big, long time test, lots of pressure, and he passed the thing. He passed the thing. And when he came home, we went, and I think he got a 78 was the score, I'm not positive. I'm going to look, got pictures. We went out and got the giant balloons of the number. And we're standing in the yard celebrating that 70. I think it was 79, celebrating a 79 because 70 was passing. Yeah, 79. So we're out there. We've got champagne poppers and we've got silly string and we're out in the yard. And I know people thought we were nuts. Like what in the world? Why are you celebrating a 79? We're celebrating a 79 because it was victory, baby, because he passed that thing on the first try. And we weren't after all or nothing. We were after progress. We were after victory, something in his life that broke the cycle. So fast forward, uh, he went to work for Liberty Mutual. And in the first few weeks, he found out he's going to have to take the state license. He's got to get an insurance license. This is so much studying. Terrifying. Oh, and this is his first really great job offer letter. It's a great job. But guess what? He was armed with the victory of passing Fort Worth Fire Department. And when he took, he passed that Texas license. He's got his Texas insurance license. Because we built on, we had to combat all or nothing thinking and begin to have an alternative. You know what? What's an outcome I'm looking for? I'm going for a certain outcome. And I don't have to have the outcome to have progress, to have success. You have to redefine success. What are your alternatives? How would you treat your best friend if you're if you're struggling, maybe you fell, fell off the wagon with a diet, or maybe you've you're struggling with an addiction, or you're struggling with with something. You're combating something in your thought life, and something goes wrong, and you really begin to get down on yourself and just beat yourself up. Okay, how would you counsel your best friend in that situation? How would you counsel if a if a young child came to you with the same issue? Would you be tender? Would you be kind? Would you be gentle? Would you help them see the good in things? What would encouragement would you give them? What would you highlight for them? What would you focus on? Likely you'd focus on what went right. You wouldn't focus on everything they did wrong. You'd focus on what, what went right. You evaluate what went wrong. Well, let's see what happened there. Well, how could we do it differently next time? But you know, this is great. You know what I noticed? You did this well and this well and this well. You went this many days on your diet without blowing it. And you know what, if you ate right, if you ate like you did these last five days, if you were to eat like that 325 days out of the year and you only ate badly 40 days of the year, wow, you would really have a health change. So we need to reframe it, change the perspective. Reframing things gives us victory. Focus on what went right. Count your wins and celebrate every win, even the small ones, even the small ones, celebrate even the small ones. Recognize your strengths. Don't focus on your faults. Recognize your strengths. Don't focus on faults. Understand that setbacks happen. Get you a t-shirt. Setbacks happen. That's all they are. Setback is not square one. Say that with me. A setback is not square one. It doesn't negate all the progress you've made. It doesn't negate all the things you've done well. It's just a setback. We're gonna start again, it's not a problem. And we get to pick up from where we left off. We don't have to go all the way back to square one. You've still got momentum. Two steps forward and one step back is still one step forward. 
it's okay. So don't dwell on those self-defeating, self-deprecating, self-judging. Uh, don't don't dwell on those thoughts. Think, okay, I made progress. I made progress. I'm I'm growing. I'm going from glory to glory. I'm changing. Find the positive. Find the positive in things, and and try to avoid those those nothing. I'll never do this. I'll never. It's never going to happen. Nothing. Nothing ever goes right for me. Those never nothing. Those kind of terms. Those all or nothing terms. Those superlatives keep us locked in that framework. You have to celebrate the progress. You're moving forward every day. You're getting a little bit better. You're growing a little bit stronger. Day by day, we get better. We get stronger. And build on that. Build on that success. Build on those things. Put on the mind of Christ. How do you see me, Father, in this situation? So I want you again to to recognize as you find yourself falling into that pattern, if you're falling into an all or nothing pattern, if you feel yourself in the binge purge cycle, if you begin to just really walk into self-condemnation and self-judgment, I want you to pause and say, no, I'm going to put on the mind of Christ. God, show me the progress. He is a long game God. He's the long game God. He sees your end from your beginning and he knows your middle and he's not at all surprised that you fell off the wagon. He's not at all surprised that you had a slip up. He knew it was coming before you did. And he had a full measure of grace at the ready for you. So I want you just to begin to recognize when you fall into that trap of all or nothing thinking and begin to celebrate the good, focus on what went right, evaluate what went wrong so you can do it better next time, but focus on what went right. Take yourself out of that pattern, that all or nothing thinking pattern that sabotages your soul. Okay. If you've got friends in your life or relatives in your life, when you find them in that all or nothing thinking, you can use language to help them. Well, tell me what went right. Okay. I know, I know, I know that was a hard thing. I know that went wrong, wrong, but what happened that was good? wow, you did this right and you did that right. This is good progress. I want to celebrate you. Let's celebrate your progress. And you can begin to help them move out of that all or nothing thinking simply by your conversation and your speech. Instead of coming into agreement with what's uh, galvanized around I'll never be and this is wrong and nothing's ever going to work, you can begin to break them out of that galvanization and look at new perspectives and new possibilities. So, Father, I thank you for this revelation. We thank you for knowledge that transforms us. We thank you that we are going from glory to glory. And we thank you for the process that's in between. Thank you for breaking us out of all or nothing thinking and helping us to put on the mind of Christ that we can work and walk and win with you in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you. Be sure to hit like, subscribe, leave a comment. Stay tuned for more. God bless.